Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Tech Tips, <laughs> once again, back here at Simcoe Diving in Barrie, Ontario. Yeah. Now you may recall a couple of sessions back, we showed you how, uh, uh, how a hydro test is done. I've talked about a hydro test, and you remember we had Chris from uh, Simcoe Diving, and he actually did a hydro test right in front of you, which hopefully answered a lot of your questions. You got to see the actual mechanism and all the neat stuff and the water goes into the tank, and the tank goes into the water, and the water, all, you saw all that. If you haven't seen it, go back and check on it. Now. I've had a couple of questions, a couple of comments. Some guys say, okay, so he did this and he pulled the tank up out of the water. What now? Well, okay, so we decided to have Hydro 2, Hydro Test 2. And back here at Simcoe Diving with Chris. And so what we're going to, we're going to carry on because there are a number of important things that happen after the actual pressure test, after the actual hydro test is done. The tank comes out of the water, the scuba tank, your scuba tank, comes out of the water. It's wet on the outside. It's wet on the inside. It's full of water. So what happens next? So we're going to go through that very quickly. It only take a few minutes and answer, hopefully answer all your questions. And, uh, and uh, so the hydro test two with Chris from Cinco Dive. Okay, Chris, you come on in here and you and I will chat off screen while you carry on. So you got the tank. This is the tank you did. And now you're pulling it out of the water. <clears throat> yeah, so once we've uh, completed our pressure test, uh, the tank comes out of the uh, jacket. And of course the tank's gonna be uh, filled with water. So we have to uh, take the water out of the tank before we can do anything else with it. So we have to remove the adapter. And uh, typically we uh, just do that with an open-ended wrench. Yeah. Now that adapter, just for the guys to know, is, is, is uh, it, it fits into the three-quarter inch thread on the tank and it actually adapts to your 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 crane. It's a quick detach. It adapts to your crane, to your your uh, hydro, your to your uh, lift. So you can lift the whole tank up full of water. Because that tank full of water has got to weigh. Well, let me. It's, it's uh, 27 and uh, cubic feet. So it's about my gosh, that's about 60 pounds. Probably at least that. Yeah, close to 60. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah, yeah. So you use that electric uh, um, hoist uh, hoist to yeah. lift it up. Yeah. That's what the adapter does. Yeah. That's right. Yep. And that also allows us to do the actual uh, oh, yeah. pressure That's test. Oh, yeah, air pressure right? too. Yeah, yep. yep. good. So uh, once we've removed the uh, cylinder from the jacket and uh, and the uh, adapter, we have to remove the water from the cylinder. So this uh, can be done in several different ways, depending on the, uh, the the shop setup or the hydrostatic testing facility setup. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to empty it into the uh, jacket tray. Are you using you reuse this water, Chris? Uh, not typically. No, no. No, usually the water just goes back down uh, down the drain. Yeah. So once the tank is uh, empty of water, then we need to put it on uh, some form of a uh, air dryer. Yeah. So uh, we have a relatively uh, economical air drying system here. There are uh, many many expensive commercial uh, systems available, of course, at a significant cost. Um, so once we place, this is actually, by the way, this is where a lot of damage can occur um, to the threads. People dropping them. So if people aren't careful about how they put the cylinder on yeah. the dryer. Yeah, yeah. So we take our time to make sure we're really careful about yeah. uh, placing the cylinder. Not on scratching the, dryer. the threads, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Once we've got our cylinder in place, it's just a matter of turning the dryer on. Yeah. Uh, for aluminum cylinders, we typically dry with uh, just, just air, temp air room uh, temperature uh, yeah. air. It's, it's not hot, it's yeah. just cold. Um, takes about 45 minutes or so with this particular system. Uh, with steel tanks, when we're drying them, uh, that's with a high, uh, high setting on the dryer. And that typically takes about uh, 20 to 25 minutes for the steels. Okay. Now, do you use any, I know some uh, facilities, they, they make a big deal about the fact that they use um, rust inhibiting coating or yep. spray yep. So, so for steel cylinders um, we actually perform the test with the anti-rust compound in ah, the perfect. test yeah yeah so uh, we don't actually produce any flash rust uh, during the test procedure itself uh, not too many shops uh, or hydrostatic testing facilities take that extra precaution we do that here at Simcoe Diving uh, we don't want to uh, we don't, don't want your cylinder to come back with rust in it so yeah yeah so once we've uh, finished drying the, the cylinder um, we're going to remove it from the dryer. Yeah. Um, typically, I do this in my inspection uh, uh, center back in my service room. Yeah, but for, yes, for, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, so for filming, we're just doing this all in the same area. Um, so I'm going to do a little visual inspection with my inspection tools to make sure that the cylinder is, in fact, nice and dry. 
Um, once because we've done you that, now, you, excuse me, but yeah. you did you did the actual visual examination earlier. Prior That's right. To Typically, exactly. we do the visual inspection prior to hydrostatic exactly. testing. Exactly right. Yeah, and that, now you're just making sure it's dry. That's right. Most cylinders will uh, fail a visual inspection before they fail a hydrostatic yep. test. Yep. So, um, so now uh, we've got it back there. We've done the visual inspection just to make sure that there's no water. It's nice and dry inside. And then we're going to prepare uh, the valve to uh, reinstall the valve, make sure it's nice and clean. I often like to run a little bit of shop air through the valve to make sure it's nice and open. Um, and then we're going to take some silicone or dielectric grease, coat the threads with a little bit, just a tiny bit of dielectric grease. That's to uh, prevent or minimize uh, oxidization. We'll put a little coating on a brand new O-ring. O-rings aren't very expensive and yeah. uh, worth changing. No, uh, I know. I used to have customers and they say, oh, no, I don't need a new O-ring. Save me the 85 cents. Okay. <laughs> every, every five years, you know, it's kind of funny, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll reinstall the valve. It's a relatively simple process. Um, we like to torque the valve here to the manufactured specification. Uh, many shops, ag again, sort of skip that test uh, or that... Uh, a procedure just to speed up the process. We don't do that. We like to take that extra step and make sure that it's torqued to the proper specification. Using our special just, uh, just for for the uh, for the viewers, that thing is called a crow foot, crow's foot wrench. Uh, once we've uh, got the valve torqued into place, uh, we'll put a new O-ring in the uh, the valve face to make sure that uh, you get a nice seal there when you put your regulators on the first time. Um, and then we like to stamp the cylinder. So uh, there's basically uh, three sets of numbers that uh, we stamp on the cylinder in Canada, uh, as well in the U.S. It's a little different in the U.S., but uh, in Canada, the requalifiers have a special three-digit number, which is an identification number. Um, in the U.S., they often use a symbol to represent the uh, hydrostatic tester identification number. So um, we like to stamp uh, near the original uh, hydrostatic test date, which is basically the manufacturer date. Um, we'll stamp our three digit number, the month, and then the year. And of course, the hydrostatic uh, test needs to be done every five years for most cylinders, steel, uh, aluminum. Uh, some uh, composite cylinders uh, are, are three years, depending on the cylinder. Uh, once we've done the stamping, then we go ahead and we place uh, our visual inspection sticker um, it shows that the day that it was visually inspected and then we'll place that on the cylinder and then your cylinder is ready to be filled and uh, put back into service. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, I know that in Canada years ago, I forget when, I don't know when it changed because I never uh, was a certified hydro test inspector, but I know we used to use the symbol here too. It used to be many uh, years ago, uh, yes. months, yep. and then a funny little symbol. That's right. And sometimes the symbol was related to the dive store. I remember uh, Tam Dive, a big, big dive store many years ago, and it was a little T instead of a D. Right, right, and right. And so on, stuff like that. Yep. But it got confusing because it, it, you would look at it, and, and you had to have a, a book of some sort to figure out where it was That's tested. Right. Yep, and yep. some of the symbols were similar. similar. So the three, uh, the three digit number is much, much better. So essentially you, you, uh, you stamp seven digits. Uh, yep, that's uh, three. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So, seven. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, three digits. Yep. Yeah. So, so just so the for first, uh, the first two, if you're looking at, if the guys are looking at their, at their thing on there, they can see that there's seven digits. And the first two digits are the month, is that right? That's right. The middle three digits are your identification that's number. That's right. And the last two digits are the year. Are the year, yeah. Now, do you space them at all, or is it seven digits in a row? Uh, they're, they're basically uh, side by side with a little space between the month yeah. and the identification number right. and the year. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it, it's not, uh, some, some uh, hydrostatic uh, testers will have a fancy stamp, uh, sometimes with a pneumatic uh, gun. Oh, yeah, I've seen uh, them, um, yeah. yeah. Again, uh, we're a little bit, uh, we're not quite that high tech. Wow. Well, uh, here, a but, lot of uh, money for no good reason. It is, yeah. yeah. But uh, just to give you an example, I mean, it's, it's not a, a special process really by any means. It's just stamping um, the numbers into the cylinder. Um, doesn't really require a whole lot of um, pressure. That's all it's required. Now, what's to, it like on a steel tank, uh, Chris? Uh, it's a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> like, when they're, like when they're dropped. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, but yeah, you do have to stamp a little harder for the steel? A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we use a, what's called a low-stress stamp, 
which means that it, it leaves uh, less of a uh, indent in the in the metal, um, so that we're not actually damaging the metal. Right. Um, because it is possible to leave uh, a dent or, or a groove yeah. in the cylinder yeah, that actually yeah. would make it not qualify, requalify. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. And that's pretty much it. And you, and fill, it with, it. you fill it with nice clean air. And nice it's out clean of, air, and now you're here. ready to go diving. All right. And for all, all of that, all that time, all this equipment and everything else, you charge it costs what about sixty bucks for that? Process yeah, it's total? about. Uh, we charge fifty-two dollars at this time for uh, aluminum hydrostatic tests, and then we charge uh, nine dollars for an air fill. So, right. so yeah. about sixty bucks are there. Yeah, those, and huh? the whole process from visual inspect from the point of visual inspection. Uh, right to putting air in it and you're ready to go diving takes probably about an hour and a half of our time. So an hour and it's a time and, 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 and you've got what, uh, eight to ten thousand dollars in equipment? That's right, yeah. yeah so eight yeah. to ten thousand dollars in an hour of your time, which at shop rates at the local Ford dealers, 140 bucks <laughs> plus an air fill. Yeah, geez, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, pretty good. That's a pretty good bargain, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hasn't changed your mind. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. For showing us all of that. Yeah, and, you're uh, welcome. I'm sure the guys will have some more questions. I'll great. be back to you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chris. Okay, guys. Well, there you go. I don't know who this tank belongs to. Maybe you recognize it. Anyway, it's ready. We'll fill it up and it's all ready <laughs> for you. And there you go, guys. You've seen the whole press process start to finish. You've seen some pretty neat machinery and uh, the tamp stamping process and, and wrenches and all kinds of neat stuff. Keep that in mind next time you go in to your dive store for your visual or even more for your hydrostat test and you find out it's going to cost you 50 60 bucks keep that in mind what's involved and no, we didn't talk about training annual recertification all that kind of stuff it's a good deal anyway guys hope you enjoyed that hydro test 2 alec pierce tech tips talk to you soon